Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our meditation today comes from our epistle reading from Philippians 3. It was read a few moments ago from the lectern. Dear friends in Christ, Ew, gross! Now, I want all of you to say that with me, okay? On the count of three, you're all going to say that with me, all right? One, two, three. Ew, gross. Yep, that's what we say when we forget to take the trash out at home. And it sits there for way too long. It happens. But could you imagine if you would fail to do that, to take the trash out time after time after time, what a mess that would become. What a stress on everybody that is, because now what was, what once was a very simple task it's, task, it's become a great big job. Not only are you going to have to spend a whole lot more time doing this, and time isn't that abundant for any of us, but you've created all sorts of new kinds of problems when you do this. Problems that could have been prevented, such as that really unpleasant odor that oftentimes is there, the gagging reflex when you have to get that trash out, the insects, the dirty trash can itself, and the rebellion of everyone in the household to take it out. No one wants to take it out. Such consequences are not something we really think about because this rarely, if ever, happens to us in our homes. We just remember to take out the trash. It's so instinctive for all of us. We just do it so that we can get on with life because we all have so much more to do without creating any new problems, especially problems dealing with stinky trash. Now, imagine a life where you never, ever had to take out the trash, where trash doesn't even exist. You don't even know what trash is. Wouldn't that be great? No mess, no worries, no stress, no stink, just carefree and happy living. Well, enough of that wishful thinking. Trash exists, and it's got to be dealt with, and it has to be taken out and gotten rid of. So, what makes trash trash. Well, trash is trash because it does us no good, has absolutely no intrinsic value for us. Not only that, but it gets in our way. It's something that's there and has to be dealt with. It has to be go. It has to be gotten rid of. Well, today in our text, we want to listen to St. Paul, and we want to hear what St. Paul in our epistle reading from Philippians 3 says about rubbish or trash. He says this, but whatever gain I had, I count it as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, trash, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. And here again what Paul says, for his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, trash. It all had to go. Well, what's Paul talking about here? What's going on in Paul's life when he wrote this letter to the church at Philippi? What might have caused him to write such a remarkable piece of scripture? Paul says in the very first chapter of Philippians that he wrote this letter while he was imprisoned at Rome. Paul understood too well how painful life was, and he's sitting in a prison cell as he writes this letter facing death. He writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says this, Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews 40 lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A day and a night I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys, in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. 
You see, Paul knew what a painful life could really be like. He had lived through it all. And yet, despite all of this, as he sat there in prison, uh, about to be put on trial for his life, he was somehow able to write those astounding words that we know so well from Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. How was Paul able to rejoice in the Lord? Despite all of the beatings, the torture, the stoning, the shipwreck, he experienced hunger, thirst, cold, and now he's sitting in a prison cell. It would be easy to think that Paul had lost everything in life. That is true, he had lost everything in life, but what he had lost had absolutely no value to him anymore because he had Jesus Christ. And because he had Jesus Christ, he had everything. I want you to listen again to what Paul says. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and I count them as rubbish, trash. Yes, what Paul suddenly counted as rubbish, he once counted as valuable and very important. Paul was once a man of very high rank among his people, a well-respected man, a man who once had the luxuries and the comfortable living many considered important in life. Paul had it. But what he had all of that suddenly become to Paul but nothing more than rubbish. Something that not only had no value to him but even more so something that needed to go and be out of his life forever. Why this outlook on life by Paul then? The answer to that question is the center of Paul's preaching and teaching. Paul, it, it, Paul put it this way in his words in verse 12. Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Because you see, Christ had claimed Paul as his own. Paul was blessed to know that nothing else in all of the world mattered. It was all rubbish. All he had lost in life, any comfortable living and luxury, was absolutely of no value whatsoever because he had a far greater something, and that was eternal life. A greater eternal value. Life forever with Jesus in heaven. And as Paul went on to say, all that he had lost, which he describes as all things, was not only lost, but it was rubbish. It was trash. And it had to go. It had to be out of his life. Because it was only going to keep him from the everlasting gift, that inheritance of Jesus Christ, eternal life forever. Do you see what gave Paul strength? What gave him hope? Even in the most hopeless of situations, and Paul had a bunch of them. He just considered everything rubbish in order that he might gain Christ and be found in him. He was given strength. He was given courage. He was given hope and joy all because he knew Christ Jesus as his Lord. And he knew that he would one day see Jesus face to face obtaining the resurrection from the dead. What a radical outlook on life Paul had here. All because he was freed up and able to let go of everything and joyfully anticipate what was to come for him. Life forever in heaven with Jesus, who had freed him from and given him a wonderful, amazing future. Hear how Paul describes this then. Paul says, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. You see, this is how Paul was able to rejoice in the Lord always. Paul was sure of what his future held. It was a perfect future when all the cares and struggles and stresses and, and rubbish and trash of this life would no longer mean anything to him at all and would not even be a part of his memory because he would be in heaven. What Paul had experienced was something very, very amazing. When Jesus comes into the rubbish and trash of our lives, all of the rubbish and trash goes away. It has to. Because in the eternal life Jesus gives, there's absolutely no place for the rubbish in one's life or anything that gets in the way of receiving what Jesus Christ gives to us by grace through faith. Paul, he was certain of the prize. He was certain of the end. This is exactly what Jesus taught too. We heard it in the parable Jesus told in our gospel lesson. The man who plants a vineyard. We all know this story very well. We've heard it clear back into Sunday school times. He plants a vineyard and he lets it out to tenants. And then the man goes out into another country and for a long, long time he leaves. And he sends a servant to collect some of the fruit from the vineyard he had planted. And the tenants, filled with wickedness, they beat him. 
and sent him away empty-handed. These tenants did this to three servants the man sent to collect some of the fruit. The next one the man would send would be his own son. He thought perhaps maybe they'll respect my son since he is my son. But the tenants thought, yeah, good deal, this is the son. He must have the inheritance. Let's kill it then. Let's kill him and take that inheritance from him. This vineyard which the man planted belonged to him. It didn't belong to the tenants. They were just the tenants. Thus his way to give any gift away, blessing or inheritance to the tenants was for him to decide, not the tenants. But the tenants had their own way. And by crafty deceit and murder, they were going to keep the vineyard. This is why Jesus told the parable. Because you see, there were many who were taking their future into their own hands. They were weighed down, if you will, burdened beyond all measure, burdened with the rubbish and trash of this world. Thus they had no hope of a blessed future. And what they needed right there in front of them stood Jesus, but they couldn't see him. In Jesus, they would have everything they could ever want or ever need. At the same time, he was the one who would clear their lives of all of that rubbish, of all of that trash, that kept them from receiving him. You see, our Heavenly Father desires for all to have what he has to give them, forgiveness of sins and eternal life forever in heaven. This is exactly why Paul rejoiced, because Jesus had given himself to Paul. Jesus had made Paul his own. That is all Paul needed. No matter what he had lost in this life, that was all Paul needed. Paul was sure because Jesus controlled and commanded his life and where it would finally end up, and that would be eternal life with him in heaven. In that way, we may rejoice with full heart, mind, body, and soul, friends. We are free from any of the rubbish and trash that we could ever have out there or could ever have carried to Jesus Christ. He's freed us from the former way of life, He's gotten rid of all of that for us and he continues to free us from that way of life each and every day that we're connected to him. You see, there's nothing that we can take to him to use to win his approval or his blessing. What he did with his life, his suffering, his death on the cross, earned for us what he exactly wants to give to us. He needs nothing from us. He needs absolutely nothing. All that was needed then and is needed and ever will be needed, Jesus has provided with his precious blood shed on that cross. So, what could happen to us that would keep us from our Lord? Well, nothing. For it's by his power, by his presence among us and in us that kills, crushes, and smashes and throws out that which can pluck us from his hand, the trash of our lives, the rubbish that's out there. Nothing can pluck us away from him when we're connected to him. Nothing can take us away from him. Jesus is the Almighty, and he is all about claiming us and keeping us. And because there is nothing that can take us away from him, we may always, always rejoice, just the same as Paul did. What does that mean for your life? Well, I leave you with the words of Paul found in Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be made known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. No more rubbish or trash. Only Jesus. Amen.